Welcome back to Logic 101, I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the conditional or if-then logical operator, and it works something like this. Take two simple sentences, H, I am hungry, E, I want to eat, you put an arrow from the first one to the second one, if H, then E, and you get, if I am hungry, then I want to eat. And that means that if the first part is true, if I am hungry, then the second part must be true as well. I must want to eat. If the first half is false, then the second half could be true or false. These conditional expressions come in many different flavors. Here I'm going to go over five of them. If, then, only if, required, necessary, and sufficient. There are more ways of writing conditional expressions in English, but at least covering these five will give you a solid baseline on how to spot them. Let's go through those one by one, starting with example one. If you are president of the United States, you are both older than 35 and an American citizen. Notice that I've highlighted P, O, and C to represent the three simple sentences that we have in this example. And what I'd like you to do now is to go ahead and pause and in the comments section, write how you would translate this into logical notation. But don't hit submit quite yet because we have four more examples. Wait to hit submit until we get through all five. And when you've done that, I'm ready to reveal the answer. This one is straightforward because it's an if-then expression. So if P, then the conjunction of O and C. So if you are president of the United States, then it must be true that you're older than 35, and it must be true that you're an American citizen. Unfortunately, the other examples won't be this easy. So good luck with the second one. This one always trips me up. You can play video games only if you have finished your homework. V and H are your two simple sentences. Think about how you'd write that into logical notation and write that in your comments section. And once you've done that, I will reveal the answer. And if you're having trouble, my hint to you is to rewrite this in English as an if-then sentence and then translate that if-then sentence into logical notation. So here, the way you translate or rewrite this sentence, preserving the original meaning but putting it into if-then putting it into an if-then expression is to write it as, if you can play video games, then you have finished your homework. And from there, you can easily translate this into logical notation, if V, then H. So if you can play video games, then it must be the case that you finished your homework. If the first part is true, then the second part must be true as a result of that. What's really tricky about the second example is that you see only if in the second half of the sentence. So if we just go back to looking at the first bullet point by itself here, we have the only if part appear appearing in the second half of the sentence. This is in contrast to the previous example where if appears in the first half of the sentence. And despite the fact that the if is in the second half of the sentence, you don't rewrite this in the if then expression with the second half of the sentence if you have finished your homework. We don't move that to the front. You keep that in the second half of the sentence and you erase the only if and move the if to the front of the sentence. So if you can play video games, you have finished your homework. Only if is really tricky like that and it always screws me up. So remember that only if you don't rewrite, you don't flip the sentence, you just move the if to the front and replace only if with a then. That is always tricking me up. I hate that one. All right, let's go to example three now. Passing a driver's test is required to have a driver's license. We have T and L as our simple sentences. Think about how you would write this in logical notation and submit it when you're ready. And to reveal my answer, well, if we rewrite this in if-then expressions, we get if one has a driver's license, then one has passed the driver's test. And from there, it's easy to write this as if L, then T. If L is true, if I have a driver's license, then it must be the case that I've passed the driver's test. Example four, to not pay absurd bank fees, it is necessary to maintain a $1,000 balance. F and M are your two simple sentences. Think about how you would write this in logical notation and write that in the comment section. And now that you've hopefully done that, here's the answer. If we rewrite this in if then, as an if-then statement, you get if one does not pay absurd bank fees, then one maintains a $1,000 balance. And so being careful to note that there's a negation here, we write that as if not F, then M. So if it's true that you're not paying absurd bank fees, then it must be the case that you've maintained a $1,000 balance. And finally, example five, 
Finishing Game Theory 101 is sufficient to have a basic understanding of game theory. We have F and U as the two simple sentences. And I want you to go ahead and pause right now and think about how you would translate this into logical notation. And go ahead and hit submit now that we have all five examples finished. And once you've done that, the answer is, well, if we rewrite this as an if-then expression, you get if one finishes game theory 101, then one has a basic understanding of game theory. So if f, then u. If it's true that you finished game theory 101, then it must be true that you have a basic understanding of game theory. All right, so perhaps not so simple. It would be totally understanding if you got a couple of these wrong. Again, I have problems with these all the time as well. So again, I can't really fault you if you're getting them wrong either. These are tricky and over time, you'll at least be able to spot your errors when you originally make them. And you'll also readily agree with someone when they point out that you were wrong. All right, so now we need to go over the nuts and bolts of the conditional. So the conventions of the conditional, we represent that in this course with an arrow. So we're going to use if P, then Q, just like that with that double lined arrow. You might see others use a single line. I just don't think that looks as pretty, especially in this font. And you might also see some people using that strange horseshoe. And, you know, uh, the reason we're not doing that is because I have no idea how to pull that up on my keyboard without searching it into or searching a character map for that character. So that horseshoe thing really stinks and we're not going to be using it as a result. I really like the pretty double lined arrow. So that's what we're using. There are many different expressions or ways of saying a conditional statement. So there's the conditional, sometimes people will call it an implication. And then the English way of saying this is simply if then. If you're just in normal English mode and you're just thinking about this in terms of the pure English language, you would think of these just, a, just as straight up if then sentences. There are different things to call the first half and the second half of an implication. So in here we have if P then Q, P is the first half, and we call the first half the antecedent or the sufficient condition, whereas the second half Q is the consequent or the necessary condition. And I'm going to be talking at length about necessary and sufficiency later on in the course. So hold any thoughts you might have on that. That's going to appear actually toward the end. Lastly, one weird thing to note about the implication, if the antecedent is false, then we say that the conditional statement is vacuously true. So that is going to be really weird at first to think that, well, you know, if the antecedent is false, if the first half of the if then a sentence is false, then the conditional expression is still true. I'll explain why we do that in the next unit when we get to truth tables. So hold any reservations you may have about that until then. The other weird thing about this is that the expression if P then Q is logically equivalent to the disjunction where you take the negation of the antecedent, not P, and you disjoin it. Did I say conjunction? I meant disjunction. You disjoin it with Q. So if P then Q is equivalent to not P or Q. And again, that might strike you as being a little weird, but we'll see why that's the case later on in this course when we get to replacement rules. So that's the conditional for you. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Take care.